Hi everybody, uh, this is Mr. Nolan, and uh, what I would like to be able to do with you today is to kind of resolve a question that has been coming up, uh, a good question. Uh, we're looking at our juncos and we find that the UCSD birds are bolder uh, than their mountain cousins, um, but we also pointed out that the mountain birds are really the source of that original population. That's where the, mount the UCSD birds came from, is from the mountains. So the question is, if the UCS birds got their traits from the mountain birds, because that's where their ancestors are from, then why don't the mountain birds behave more bold like the UCSD birds? If those traits came over from the mountains, why don't we see that in the mountain birds? Uh, and so in order to do this, what we have to do is to explain, uh, to talk about what's called alleles, and court levels in our in our birds, uh, and to, in order to talk about how did these two different kinds of, of birds evolve, how did our mountain birds become city birds? So I just want to jump back and look at this graph um, that we kind of referred to in a previous video. This graph is a, a, is really four scatter plots all superimposed on each other. So in this uh, scatter plot, what you see is that there are the Mount Laguna females uh, over here. There's the uh, the San Diego females, and then there's San Diego males way up here, and then there's the UCS, I'm uh, sorry, the mountain uh, males down here. And we, what we can generally conclude from looking at this scatter plot is that the more quartz that you have, this chemical, uh, it's this anxiety chemical, the more quartz that you have in the bird's blood, the less bold it behaves. We know this because it kind of moves down toward this bottom right quadrant. So the more plasma, uh, corticosterone, the less bold, right? It tips down. That's a negative correlation. More plasma, less bold. The opposite is also true. Uh, if we kind of walk backwards here and we say that, okay, these birds have a small amount of court in their plasma, their blood, uh, they are more bold. So birds generally that have less court end up more bold. So this is the effect of corticosterone on the behavior of the birds. So that was something that you should have uh, been able to find out in in your um, in your in your investigation with the juncos. So what we want to be able to do is to model this. We want to be able to model this in a way that makes sense to us. So before we do, I want us to talk about what are called alleles. So uh, alleles uh, are just different versions of a gene. And so I have an example here that might be familiar to us. Uh, I have these four images. Uh, of these these women with different color hair. So this is a great kind of a stock example of what we're talking about when we say alleles. Okay, there's different different alleles. So there, all of these women have genes for hair color. It's not like one of them doesn't have a gene and the other one does. Um, and similarly, uh, it, it doesn't mean, just because they have different color hair, it actually doesn't mean that, for instance, this woman with black hair has a um, totally different chemical, you know, signature set of genes than this blonde woman with the, this lighter hair. What it really means is that they both have the gene for hair color, but it's a different version of the gene. So we've got, you know, for just as a few examples, we've got a red allele, a black allele, brown allele, blonde allele. This is kind of oversimplifying, but um, the important thing to recognize is that there are different versions of the same trait. The trait is hair color. The version uh, is specific examples of different colors. So red, black, brown, blonde, those are all alleles of one trait, hair color. So if we think about this in terms of our juncos, what is the alleles that we're looking at? Well, we're looking at uh, bold alleles, right? Bold alleles versus not bold alleles. So we know that the mountain birds are not bold and the UCSD birds are. So that means that there must be a difference in their alleles, which we have seen in previous videos. They don't learn this behavior. They're, it's inherited. So let's jump forward and start thinking about how we would go about modeling this. How do you model um, this relationship between alleles, court levels, the behavior of the birds, in these two different populations. I'm going to show you kind of two ways to do this. One is called a flow chart. Um, the other is going to look very familiar to the antibiotic resistance model that we have done in the past and a few other models that we've looked at over and over. So uh, our flow chart for how the, the juncos changed. I want you to go ahead and follow along with me um, as, as I kind of explain this flow chart. Some of you developed this flow chart today, and so we just want to be able to, to understand what does this model show. So I'm going to put a few things up on the board, and then we'll look at it. All right, so let's take a look at what I've done here. Um, we've got 
uh, I've got my our two populations. We've got our UCSD birds, then we've got our mountain birds. And I'm indicating that our UCSD birds are more bold, and our mountain birds are less bold. So this is an important part of our model, is sort of distinguishing the populations. But the question at this point uh, is why? What is the cause of this boldness? So let's kind of move forward with, forward with our flowchart model and think about what is causing that. So you can see I'm beginning to put our dual flowchart model together. We're actually going to go from right to left. It might seem a little odd. But we're kind of starting off with what we know, and we're trying to think of what causes this. So we saw, we can even see right in the graph that we looked at earlier in the video, that the UCSD birds are more bold because they have reduced court levels. And the mountain birds are less bold because they have more court levels. They actually have higher court levels. So let's go ahead and indicate that in our model. So what I've indicated here is that, uh, you know, our court levels are what is going to affect our boldness. They have opposite effects, like what we said. It's actually a, a, a negative correlation. So we see the less court, the more bold. More court, the less bold. But what's causing our court levels in our birds? Well, really, when you think about it, it's the alleles. Uh, we have a uh, an allele that causes less court, which makes the birds bolder, and we have a different allele that makes the birds have higher court and make them less bold. So let's include that in our model. So there we go. So we've got it. We've got our low court allele causes less court, and then that results in more bold birds. Our high court allele causes more court, and that results in birds that are less bold. So really remember, alleles, we're really talking about DNA. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about genes. So when it really comes down to it, it's, it's that we have these different versions of genes that are resulting in a whole different population, a population that behaves really very differently. So I'm going to model this in another way. So this is one way that you can do this. This is kind of like a dual flow chart. Um, but there's another way that I'm going to do it. And this one is probably going to, going to look actually more familiar to you. So it's going to use a model that we have already seen with our antibiotic resistance. And we're just going to sort of modify it with more information in order to show this in terms of a population. So how do we want to show this in terms of, of a population model? Well, um, this is something that we can do actually very easily. We're just going to sort of modify the model that we already understand from our bacteria. So let's kind of start off thinking in terms, in logical terms, we're starting with mountain juncos. That's what we're going to start with. Um, and we know that they are not bold. They're not bold because they have high court levels, and they have high court levels because they have that high court allele. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to indicate that in our model, and then we'll kind of go from there. And we'll try to figure out how did this population become more bold over time. So uh, I've started off with our mountain birds. We've got that. And we know that they have more uh, court, and that leads them to have lower boldness, and that's because of the, uh, the high court allele. So let's indicate that. Okay, so I've indicated that these are not bold. They have high court and high court allele. Now, as it is, how are our mountain birds supposed to become bold? Um, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know how that's going to happen because I don't have any bold genes to work with here. No bold alleles, rather. So um, that really is something that's not really going to happen. So in order to make that happen, we have to have some bold genes to start with. So what that means is that we have a mutant in here. We have a mutant. And that mutant is actually bold. He's got low court levels, which means he has the low court allele. This is very important. Um, if we do not have some variation in this population to start with, our population can't change under any circumstances. Uh, it can grow and shrink, but it really can't change in its qualities. So we need to have this gene present in the mountain birds. So in response to a lot of your questions, well, why weren't the mountain birds bold in the first place? Actually, some of them are, uh, just not many, right? You maybe just have a handful hiding out because it's a mutant, right? It, it has a mutant allele uh, that results in a low court level. Now, that's probably not very helpful in the mountains because birds need to be able to respond to threats and situations in their environment with high anxiety so that they can protect themselves and protect their offspring. Um, but if you change the situation, the environment, then our bird can actually 
uh, maybe being uh, bold is actually an advantage to them. So let's go ahead and move forward with our, with our model here. They're migrating to the UCSD campus. So here our birds have migrated to the UCSD campus, um, and we notice that this mutant has come along with them. And we have to remember that UCSD is a very scary, scary place. It's very high anxiety. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of stimuli that are going to scare our birds. Now, if our birds are, uh, are high anxiety, high court level birds, they're probably going to be crappy parents. They're going to be crappy parents. They're really not going to be able to survive very well in that environment because they're under such an enormous amount of stress. So what we're probably going to see is that those high anxiety mountain birds are either going to die or maybe even migrate. They might actually just leave uh, because they, they really don't like that environment. It's a very scary environment for them. So what's probably more likely is that we're going to see over time, some of those birds are going to die um, and some of them will reproduce. The, use, the birds that are going to reproduce on UCSD campus are probably going to be these bold ones. These birds that have a high degree of boldness. You might have a handful of, uh, of, of birds show up that, you know, are, are not bold still. But the important thing to recognize is that the frequency of the alleles in our population has changed over time. This looks just like the bacteria model that we've already seen. So this is a really important concept that the allele frequencies have changed. So this is another good model to kind of show how our mountain birds, which are not bold, turn into our UCSD birds, which are bold. Our allele frequencies have changed. And so this is a really important concept for us to understand um, for, for our birds and for our model. It's really alleles. And if we think about that, uh, that um, flow chart that we just looked at earlier, a few minutes ago, um, we understand this causal relationship that boldness is affected by court, which is affected by the allele. We can also see how does the frequency of those alleles change over time. So I hope that at this point you are able to explain this. How did the mountain birds become bold, uh, even though we really don't find a lot of boldness in that population? It's actually hiding out in there. It's a mutant, uh, just like the resistant bacteria was hiding out in our non-resistant population. It's, it's either appears as a mutant or it was there the whole time. Uh, and it just needs to wait for the environment uh, to, um, you know, to, to make it a beneficial mutation. So, uh, you know, I hope that this was helpful, and I hope that now you can, you can answer that question.